Good morning, Adve. Leonard Parker here. Uh, I put together this video audit. I like to do these on video so that I can go more detailed in different things in uh, areas of opportunity I see for your website. And so you can see what I'm reviewing as I discuss it. I, I find that these are a bit better than doing a, a audit from an automated software because uh, you have no context on how to apply that data and information from an automated audit. So that explains uh, the length of time it took to put this together because uh, I wanted to give your website and your business as much attention as it deserves. So first I'll start off with some of the things I think you're doing very well. Uh, the first being I see that you have a Facebook page and you've been being, uh, you've started collecting likes, you've started collecting uh, reviews. And I also see that you have a Google My Business profile where you've also started to collect reviews and it looks like you have really good reviews. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I would recommend for this uh, reviews, that's an ongoing process. So anytime someone purchases a product from you, um, your priority should always be to get that review um, and preferably an actual testimonial. So like these guys, they actually wrote something. It will be great if you could get that testimonial. Um, now what I would do is prioritize your Google My Business page because when someone types in your company name, this is the first thing they'll probably see because it takes up so much real estate on the search results page. Uh, so always prioritize Google My Business. And then after that, I would prioritize Facebook and Yelp. Now going back to your website, I really like that you have a clear mission. Um, I, I read through each page and I really like your mission. Um, I understand the why of why you started this uh, business and you're right, uh, bottled water and educating people about the benefits and importance of drinking pure water uh, is very, very important and it's very admirable. Uh, someone who they might not be in the market for a water filtration system, but they really like your mission. That could be a reason that they purchase from you because they align and agree with your mission. And then overall, I really like uh, the content, the product content. Um, I understand the background of your company and I really go into detail about the products. And I think that's really good because if I'm not familiar with water filtration, if I don't have an engineering background or a background in that in that domain, then kind of knowing some of these things and reading about some of these things helps me understand the value of paying thousands of dollars for one of your water filtration products. So great job there. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to actually do uh, you know, go over some areas of opportunity for your website and for your brand. And there are six different areas that I'm going to cover. And, you know, I'm going to specify some areas I think should be higher priority than others. So the first is your on-page and technical SEO. So the biggest thing that, that, you know, really concerned me when I Google some of your URLs, so if I put this URL directly into Google, it says that it can't find a page. And I did this for a few other URLs on your website. So for your reverse osmosis systems, when I actually put the URL in, it can't find a page. And that should never happen because if you have a website, someone should be able to find it on Google, Bing, Yahoo, and other search engines. So what that tells me is that your pages aren't being indexed and that there's some issue with Google and other search engine crawlers. Uh, they're not able to review your website and include you in a Google index. And so if you're not indexed, then it's going to be impossible for someone to find you unless they type in your website directly. So that's probably the highest priority item, something if I were you, I would try to uh, resolve today uh, or as soon as possible because again if no one can find you then no one's going to go to your website so 
Uh, like I said, I think it might be an issue with your robots.txt file. Um, I'll include this in an email, and I'll include a high-level summary of everything in my email, just so in case you miss anything. That's going to be your robots.txt file, and you just want to see. Uh, you know, I would use a tool called Google Search Console, and you want to see how Google is crawling your website because I'm sure there's something that's being blocked. Um, so, but it's definitely something that you should uh, review. So that's the biggest thing with your on-page and technical SEO. Now, other than that, I notice, you know, for example, I'm on your, let's say if I go to your reverse osmosis systems page, well, that one's good. But let's say if I go to the Acolyne Cure page, you know, so it's your website. And then at the end of the, the URL, we call this the slug. Uh, it just says blank page. And this is actually a place where you want to optimize for your keywords. So instead of blank hyphen page, I would have something like alkaline water cure or something, something that's going to target your keyword or at the very least target the topic of the page. Uh, but that's very important because this is one of the areas that Google uh, search engine crawlers check when trying to figure out what a what a page is about and how to index it and rank it in Google. So go through your URLs, uh, change them, but make sure that you are setting up 301 redirects from the old URL. So in this case, it would be this uh, forward slash blank page to the new URL, to the new URL, which would be something like forward slash alkaline water cure, something like that. And I'll make sure to provide you with some resources so that you can take a look at that uh, closer. I understand you have a dev, a develop, development background, so I'm sure you you would know how to set up some of those things. Um, so other than that, I would add more more hyperlinks between the different pages on your website. So for example, uh, let's say you wanted to uh, uh, link to uh, let's see here the health benefits. So you can actually link this to, you know, one of your pages where you're talking about the health benefits of alkaline water. And that's the that's a way you can better interlink your website. People can navigate to different pages on your website in, in case they don't necessarily want to use the navigation menu. So you make your website user friendly and it makes it easier, easier for search engine crawlers to crawl your website. Now I've used the word crawl, but basically crawl means these search engines, they're all built on top of very advanced computer networks. And so for your website to be included in a search engine like Google or Bing, uh, those, that computer network needs to review or crawl, as it's called, your website. So that's what I mean by crawlers. And then finally, uh, well, actually, this, I've had two more things. Your page titles, your page titles is this little box that popped up here. Uh, so for this page, it's the alkaline cure pipe symbol, Katie Pure Water. You know, maybe put something like the alkaline cure, the alkaline water cure or something. Again, this is so, somewhere where you want to include a keyword or a relevant phrase that will tell the searches and crawlers exactly what your website is about or this web page is about. And then finally, I would add JSON LD schema to the back end of your website. Uh, let's see, where are we? So JSON LD schema in a nutshell is a special snippet of code that you add to the back end of your website. And basically this, this snippet of code, it adds more context to what your website is about. So you would add something like uh, your product schema. So you would have a different product schema for each of your products. You would add an organization schema that will give Google more information about your brand. You would add a local business schema. It seems like you have a local brick and mortar store in Katy. So in that schema, you would specify that, hey, we are a water filtration company. We're based in Katy. This is our address. This is our contact information and so on. And this will just add more context uh, in, the, in, the, in the realm of the search engine crawlers to your website. Well, I can go to your website. I can read what your what your website is about, what your business is about. Uh, again, search engine crawlers, they're computers. 
So they don't necessarily read this text. They do read what's uh, specified in the HTML. So that's definitely something I would add to my to-do list if this was my website. And I'll provide uh, you in my email uh, tool where you can generate the schema yourself and you can just simply add that to the back end of your website. So that wraps up the on-page and technical SEO part of this video. Next, and this is related to SEO, but it's more about helping you get more customers through your website, it's conversion optimization. So the first thing I would do, uh, let's go to your testimonials page. So it seems like you do have some pretty good testimonials, but you know you definitely want to use real people's names. So I'm not sure if that's what they submitted, but try to make this as realistic as possible. So Daniela, that's a good good testimonial, right? Because Evil Insider Dental One, uh, who is that? <laughs> you know that sounds like a a comic book character or something. So always make sure that you actually get a person from the business name. Uh, their actual name. In addition to that, what would make two things that would make these testimonials stronger? If you had a picture of that customer. Again, um, if I'm a woman and I see a picture of another woman on here, it sounds kind of petty, but uh, that's the one little thing that can push me to buy. Um, same thing if I see someone with the same ethnicity or someone who looks to be my age, that's going to help you as far as getting that sell on your website. And then lastly, if possible, if you have any customers who are uh, more gregarious, try to get a video testimonial. And I will upload this video to YouTube, you know, start a YouTube channel there. And I would post that and embed that YouTube video on my website. Uh, that will definitely give you some SEO benefit. And then again, hearing someone speak about the, the quality of your products, the superiority of your products, uh, that will definitely, if I'm a prospect, will definitely uh, entice me to learn more or even to buy directly. Other than that, on your payment page, or really you can actually include this in a footer, I would include logos of your accepted payment methods. And so this could be, you know, a logo of a Visa card, MasterCard, PayPal, you know, there's several others, but again, as a consumer, and I bought things online before, that's going to add more credibility to your website that, hey, I know that logo. I'm a little, I feel a little bit more secure about giving you my credit card information. Um, so definitely consider adding those logos either on your purchase page or somewhere here in the footer. So we talked about the testimonials. We talked about the logos for payment. You know, one more thing on the testimonials, I'll consider adding one here on your homepage. So just consider maybe adding one. So I like the our mission in this section, but maybe adding one under here. Um, or even you can add like a, a, a slider where uh, each testimonial is on the screen for maybe five or five to 10 seconds. And then it switches to another testimonial. I think that would be uh, really good for your conversion optimization and as soon as someone lands on your website well they can see uh right away you know some uh, some uh, messages from your happy customers and then for the last point here i'm going to switch over to your product page so yeah it's your shop page So for your product page, you know, it's cool that you added some details, some features, you know, like the one year warranty installation, first year maintenance and so on. I think those are all good. But for some of these, like complete six stage purification. Now, if I'm a customer, I have very minimal knowledge about water, for, water purification. Um, you know, that sounds like a good thing, uh, six stages. So I'm assuming that's the water is purified six times, but tell them why that's a good thing. You know, make that clear to the uninformed or uneducated or non-technical customer. Um, 
Yeah, natural soap installation. What is that exactly? You know, give me a little bit more information about some of these more technical topics. And really what you want to ship is, okay, you have your customer. You know who your customer is. You've been in business for 10 years. You know this feature will address one issue that they have. Now, the final step of that is, okay, taking that feature and then mapping that with a benefit to your customer. So 1.0 cubic feet water softener, you know, is that good? Is that bad? You know, all I can do is compare it with the other uh, packages that you have. But then again, I don't know what that means exactly. Why, why is that a good thing? Again, the four stage, four stages. Okay, that's less than a six stage. But why do I need to have my water purified in four stages? Why isn't two enough? Uh, you need to just educate your customer or your prospect a little bit more that way, they'll know why they're spending this amount of money for or why there are differences in your different packages. So just think about it that way. If you're a person that does, has no uh, education on water purification, think about, you know, talking to, talking to them as a beginner. And that's my last point on conversion optimization. At the end of the video, I'm going to revisit some things uh, with your branding that will also have an effect on your conversions. But really the importance for conversion optimization and conversions are anyone who purchases a product from your website. So think about it this way. So let's say out of every 100 visitors that visit your website, one person converts. So let's say that's your metric today. I'm just using this hypothetical example. Let's say if you were able to increase that to, to three people for 100 visitors, three people buy. That's a small number. You increased it from 1% to 3%, your conversion rate. But just think about if two more people were buying out of every 100 people, what that would mean for your bottom line. So that's why conversion optimization is very important and highly recommend it that you spend some time thinking about how you can make it more, your offers more enticing for people to buy. Now for the third part of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about content. And content for your particular niche is gonna boil down to two different things. First is the, your text content. So I see on your blog, you don't have any blog articles. And I understand that's usually as a business owner is one of the hardest things to find time for. So, but you have to think about this. A big part of you uh, making a sell on any particular product is you educating your customer, your prospect. So I might not even be in a market for a water purification system. Now I saw that one of the health benefits is that um, water, pure water, alkaline water, it can help with weight loss. So maybe I'm looking for ways to lose weight and I just come across water purification and I come across an article that you have about water purification. So you've educated me on this thing about water, pure water and how it can help with weight loss. So now I'm interested in water purification systems. So I'm going to look, since you were able to educate me, You've already built your credibility. I recognize you as an expert. I'm more likely to buy from you than from someone else. So that's the role that content plays in getting people to buy from you. And when you're writing content from your website, uh, you can start you can start small. So aim for one really good blog article per month. And using a weight loss example, so let's say you have a you know a uh, a really good article on pure water and weight loss. And it's really long, maybe 2,000 and 3,000 words. But when you're writing this, your, your approach should be, I want to write the best damn article about pure water and how it helps with weight loss on the internet. That's the way you're really going to beat your competitors. And so you can think about this as your pillar post. So that's what you write month one. And then months two through five, you write other articles that are all related to pure water and weight loss, but you drill down on a specific topic. So maybe month two, you talk a bit more about how pure water and weight loss can help with your metabolism. Month three, you talk 
talk about the detoxification benefits. Month four, we talk about how pure water aids with digestive health. And then month five, you talk a little bit about how pure water uh, that's free of toxins can curb your appetite. And then once all of these articles were published, they're all related to weight loss. So you want to link them together. So remember uh, when I said interlink the pages on your website, you want to make sure you interlink these pages. And when it's all said and done, you're going to have what's called a content silo. And so when a search engine crawlers review your website, they're going to see, oh, you have this really long article about pure water and weight loss. And then you have all of these sub articles about specific topics. That's going to help with your topical relevancy. And when your website is represented or recognized as topically relevant to any specific topic, then it's much easier for you to rank well in Google. And I'm going to share with you a link to our article that's going to talk more about the nuts and bolts of, of this particular concept. But I've seen it work wonders where a smaller company can compete with a national brand just because they have spent they have spent some effort on creating good content and doing it in a strategic way like we see here. And that's just one content silo. Maybe later you want to write a content silo on managing hard water. You know, that's just an example, but that's kind of the idea. You want to have these different categories, and then under under those categories, you want to have subtopics uh, where you really drill down on specific uh, niches within that category. So that's the first part of your content. The second part of your content, I would recommend that you invest some time in creating videos. Um, and the great thing about videos, you can combine them and actually embed them on your articles. And that will all give them more SEO benefit because you want to add these videos to your YouTube. And then from that YouTube, you embed that YouTube code onto your website. And why does that have an SEO benefit? Well, you may know that Google owns YouTube. And so YouTube itself, it's a, the second largest search engine behind Google. So if someone doesn't find you on Google, there's a good chance that your video is going to show up there. And I'll just give you an example here from one of your competitors, Katie Pure Water Solutions. I thought these were you guys, but I uh, drilled down and I saw it was a different company. But look how even when I Google your, your company name, their YouTube video actually shows up uh, at, at number three. So it's ranking above some of your 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 uh, listings, your yellow pages listing and some of your other your your Mansa listing, some of these other listings that's that uh, that you have here. So highly recommended that you spend some time on creating videos and it doesn't have to be anything professionally edited and filmed. I think that's a myth. Usually people are OK with if you on every Friday. You talk about some topic, you get on the camera, you talk about some topic related to water purification. And maybe you talk, you do a demonstration of one of your products so that it speaks a little bit more than the text on your website. People can actually see how your systems work. And anytime you give your prospects more information, again, you're building more trust and they're more likely to buy from you. I highly recommended that you incorporate video into your content and marketing strategy. And then, of course, you can share that video on your Facebook page or any other uh, you know, social media profiles that you have for the company. So highly recommend video. And that wraps up the third part of this video. The fourth part, I'm going to talk a little bit about off-page SEO. So what is off-page SEO? So before we talked about on-page SEO, and these are all areas and topics that relate to cleaning up some things on your website. Uh, off-page SEO is the exact opposite. And really when people refer to off-page SEO, they're talking about link building. And this is simply, if I have a website and I like your content or I like your products, I link from my website to your website. And as you can see here, I did an audit of all of the backlinks to your website. Unfortunately, you don't have any. And we were to compare that to some of your competitors, they do have backlinks. So in my email, I'm gonna share with you a report. It's basically a backlink gap analysis where it shows all of the websites that are linking to your competitors, but aren't linking to you. 
And I highly recommend that if you want uh, some direction on getting started, go out and, and out, do some outreach to those websites who aren't linking to you, but linking to your competitors. They've already shown interest that they are interested in this topic. So if you can put together a really good blog post or you know, clean up your website a bit, then it's more likely that they're going to link to you. And the reason why backlinks are so important for SEO is that since Google came into existence, backlinks have always been a key component of its ranking algorithm. And that's decreased in importance over the last five years or so, but it's always going to be a major component. And being Yahoo to other search engines, they place emphasis on backlinks as well. So I will always recommend you, this is an ongoing uh, process, so always be thinking how you can build these backlinks to your website. Now, before I go on to the next part, just so you know, I did a website speed test. Uh, your website is very fast, 1.49 seconds. Um, I'm sure, I, as I understand, you're, the, you're, you're a developer, you have a development background, but yeah, Maybe if you have some time, clean up some of these things and you can actually improve your performance grade even more. Uh, your website is mobile friendly, so that's always good. So um, yeah, just uh, I would say maybe spend some time cleaning up this, this uh, some of these issues here. And I'll share with you a, a snapshot of this so you'll have it for your reference. Now, back on track. So the fifth area I want to go over with your, your website and your web presence is uh, your local SEO. So you're a local based business. You have a brick and mortar location in Katy. So going back to this, uh, to this profile here, this is the most important element of your local SEO. So you want to go in here. You want to give more reviews. You want to add more, more, um, you want to add, uh, more, more, a, a better description for your business. Uh, you want to make sure that all of your information is correct. You want to add questions and answers here. So if you commonly get uh, questions, the same questions from your customers, add those here and then provide an answer. That's going to provide someone some value so that um, they're more likely to click due to your website. One thing I saw here is the home goods store part. So I'm not sure with your particular niche if that's as specific as you can get with this, but if there was an option and this is your category, if there's like an option for water service or water filtration or water water systems, I would definitely uh, switch that because that would be make it more specific to the products that you actually sell. Now, now that we talked about Google My Business, you know, we've already talked about reviews. So again, prioritize getting reviews on Google My Business. And do you also want to get reviews on your Facebook business page and your Yelp page and your uh, yellow pages uh, page. So this one right here. Uh, and I didn't find a Yelp for you guys, so I don't know if you have one, but if you don't, you definitely want to set one up. Um, now, one thing for your Facebook business page, I saw that you have two. So you have this one, which it looks like is the most active. Uh, and I think it's great you have some content here. It's actually from a few days ago, so kudos on that. But it looks like you have an older version as well. So what I would do, and it doesn't look like you have much here, I would actually uh, just close this particular page down and then just use this one as your main page moving forward. Um, these type of duplications, they can cause all types of issues, which I'll get into in a bit. So just make sure that you just keep this page as your one and only Facebook business page. Now, with that said, uh, you know, something else that I would do, uh, I would definitely add some logos. And I think you have logos to your social media pages on your, on your, your contact us page, but go ahead and just add those to your footer here. Uh, that way they're always there in case someone would like to click do to one of your social media pages. And then in addition to that, I will also add here, you have your phone number here. I will add your address and I will also add your email here. And just to make things consistent, add it here in the footer so it's all in one place. And then lastly, I would embed your map here in the footer. 
And again, this is a way to make your website your more user friendly. So just take the embed code uh, from your map. So you would just click here. Excuse my computer, it slows down when I share. So just bear with me here. You're gonna click the share button. And you would just hit embed map. And you're gonna embed that map into the footer area of your website. So that's pretty much it. And so the last thing for your local SEO, and it's probably the most important, I ran a audit on the different listings for your business. You can see here, I'll, again, I'll share a screenshot of this so you can reference for yourself. But you see here, there are a lot of listings where you're not present. So the way to think about this, so again, Google, the search engine crawler, is built on a computer network. So it can't necessarily go to your website and make the assessment that you're a legitimate business. So one way it does that is by looking at these popular business listing websites and first seeing if you even have a business listing there. And then secondly, making sure that your business information, your business name, your business address, your business phone number is consistent across the board. So you can see here on your MapQuest website, you have a different phone number. Um, Let's see, where, where else? It looks like that's a common issue. You have a different phone number on different websites. So I would stick with one phone number and then change that for the other websites. And so why is that important? Well, if a business has a different name or a different address or a different phone number from site to site, then just how credible is that business, right? I mean, I'm sure you've called a business before and it gave you a disconnection message or something like that, or the number's not active message. And it was kind of annoying. So you want to make sure that you're not giving customers that same issue. So that's why you want to make sure that you clean this up. And I'll actually share with you a couple of tools that you can use to do that automatically. Uh, you do have to pay, but definitely worth, worth, uh, worth spending some time and investment on this uh, particular issue. And that wraps up your local SEO. Now, I'm going to go back to your website for the last part of this video. And really, I just want to talk a bit about your branding. And, you know, I, part of this, I compared your website to some of your competitors. And there are a few things that bother me about your website. First, um, I had to go to your about page to find your logo. So I highly recommend that you put your logo somewhere here in the upper left hand corner. That's that's usually the best practice. And on top of that, to get rid of this, actually buy a domain name for your website. So do something like katiepurewater.com or katiepurewatertechnology.com. Something that's going to have your business name in it, but it looks a lot more professional than having this wixsite.com in it and having this big banner at the top. Uh, that's just, you know, you want to present a professional appearance for your company because if we can compare your website to, you know, some of your competitors, these guys are based in San Antonio, but they're ranking for some of the terms that you want to go after. But look like they have their logo, the color scheme all matches, all the font and a font family is all the same and everything is clean. It has a clean look. Look at, looking at one of your other competitors, Kinetico. Uh, they're a direct competitor, and again, they're they're ranking for some of your your same uh, keywords. But let's just look at their homepage. So again, very clean, very organized. You know, the spacing is there, so everything. I don't have to struggle to read anything. And their branding, the colors used on their website match what's in their logo. I don't get that impression from your website, honestly. Um, you know, there are different colors used. Um, you know, the pictures, they could be much better. Looks like these were maybe taken from Alibaba or, you know, some other product website. But I think there definitely can be some time uh, spent on cleaning up the website, just 
rehauling the look and feel of the website. Um, so buying your domain, the main name, you know, getting a, you know, placing your logo up here in the front uh, on the on your homepage at the top left hand corner, just doing an overall cleanup of your website, I think will do wonders uh, for your brand, like the brand uh, visibility, uh, the conversion optimization. And then at the end of the day, when you have a nice, a better looking website, people are more likely to stay on it longer. And so that's a positive SEO signal. It's called your dwell rate. And you want to give reasons for people to stay on your website, even if it just means it's a well-designed website. So I would definitely spend time on that, Ave, uh, to make sure that uh, you're not uh, pushing any potential customers away. So that brings me to the end of the video. Like I said, I will provide some additional resources in my email. Uh, but I hope this video has been helpful and uh, you're able to move forward with some of these recommendations. Thanks for reaching out and you have a great rest of your day.